One phenomenon in recent years, uh, especially post uh, the George Floyd incident, but even predating that has been the rise of what has been known as the progressive prosecutor in several large American cities, um, criminal justice reform minded DAs. And a, a couple of years ago, I talked with George Gascon, who was the, a former police officer who became DA in San Francisco and then LA. I am curious what your reaction is to what Gascon had to say. We have convinced our community for years that over incarceration and more police presence and more prosecutions actually was leading to greater safety when in fact it has probably led to greater insecurity. The emphasizing the criminal process when it comes to low level nonviolent offenses actually increases safety in general, not just for those types of crimes, but even for more serious crime. What should the consequences actually be? Well, I, I, I hate to even almost use the term consequences because when people are saying an attempt because they don't have money to, <laughs> to get housing, criminalizing that behavior, I think is not only immoral, I believe, but it doesn't fix the problem, right? So I would say that rather than consequence, I like to use the term you know, the right intervention. To summarize Gascon's argument there, it's that the police are generally the wrong intervention for a lot of what is going wrong in public spaces and that there should be either a more robust social safety net or some other organization that intervenes in certain circumstances. I'm sure you've heard this argument a lot. What's your reply to it? I support that argument. Most American police chiefs, most cops who have to deal with all of this, the emotionally disturbed, the homeless, the, uh, uh, the narcotics addicted, would like to get out of the business to, of something that they're not trained adequately to deal with, that they're mm -hmm. working with laws that are inappropriate. So where Gascon's coming from, and for purposes of your audience, people need to understand, George Gascon was my number two in the LAPD mm -hmm. for most of my time as chief of police. I supported him when he went to Mesa as chief of police in Mesa. I supported his uh, appointment as chief of police in San Francisco, but I do not support most of his ideas since he has now gone over to the progressive district attorney wing of uh, government. Uh, you cannot show me one city in America that has one of these progressive district attorneys. We're well intended, and we share the belief that uh, criminal justice reform is necessary. We share the belief that there are a lot of alternatives to using the police for a lot of these social ills. But until we fund them adequately, till we coordinate and organize them adequately, police are left as the agency of last resort to deal with them. That's the reality. And you cannot find uh, one city in America, Philadelphia, uh, 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 Los Angeles, certainly, uh, that has one of these progressive DAs that are funded by the George Soros Open Society Foundation that are having success in reducing crime or disorder. They're all a mess. And they're well intended, but their, their policies and procedures are actually not reducing crime or disorder. This stuff is not rocket science. It's the, I know, understand your history, what worked, what didn't work. And uh, what I worry about, unfortunately, over the next two years is we're, we're going into the silly season. We're going into the next presidential election and we're uh, effectively got two totally divergent perspectives. Very far to the left on one hand, the Democrats, very far to the right on the right, the Republicans. Uh, we need to get more people to, 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 to center ground, to common ground. Explain what, what is the problem when you say very far to the left, and that's a problem. What, what is the definitive mistake that people on the left are making and on, on the, the right? On the left, it is the idea of continued attacks on police, the idea of uh, undermining the legitimacy of police. Uh, is, is, does policing have its flaws? Does the profession have its issues? Like every uh, profession, it does. But we, I've been in it for 50 some odd years and believe me, what it was back in 1970 is not what it was in our 19, uh, 2023. Uh, on the right, the issue is this rise of uh, militarism the, uh, in terms of the, the Proud Boys and this anger at government. But when I talk about the far left, I mentioned also, I would uh, go back to uh, George Gascon and the progressive DAs. Well intended, but where are the results? What, where, are, where are their policies and procedures? They're keeping a lot of people out of jail, great. But we have more murder victims, we have more rape victims, we have more people being harmed, more cities being made less safe. Uh, if they were showing success, in terms of reduced crime and victims, 
I'd be, I'd be celebrating them. I have no problem with a lot of the reforms they want to put in place, but the way they're doing them, not working. On the far right, the idea of more cops. More cops is not the solution unless those cops are highly trained. You think Memphis is going to benefit by hiring more cops like those five that they just hired in the last couple of years? Certainly not. Um, I, think the I think the response that the progressive prosecutors and their supporters hmm. would have is that your uh, or one response I have is that your approach, um, even if it can, you can show some uh, empirical results with it. The the other side of the empirical equation there is that when you kind of flood the zone with more police officers and tell them to go more aggressively intervene um, in the you know problem areas that the inevitable result of that is that more people in minority communities, more blacks and Latinos are going to have more interactions with police, more unwanted interactions with police. And I mean, that has been borne out by the, the data, you know, that they that those communities disproportionately then get more, uh, you know, interface with the police. And there, there's inevitably going to be people who aren't doing anything, who are walking down the street getting harassed suddenly. Um, I, I don't deny that. This whole conversation has been about how to deal with that. Yeah. Uh, again, I'll speak to my own time, my own record, in the sense of I don't apologize for uh, any of my years in policing in the sense of 95, 96, did we encourage more arrests? Yes, because that was going to be necessary to stop the fare evasion, the subway, to stop the 2,000 murders on the streets, the 5,000 people shot in the streets of New York, the half million people, victims of serious crime in New York. I'm very proud that by 2019, before the state legislature started messing it up again, there were fewer than 100,000, for the first time in history, fewer than 100,000 reported crimes in a city that had now grown from seven and a half million to eight and a half million people in a city that has also become much more minority majority than it was back in 1994. So it can be made safer everywhere for everyone. I think I've got a lot of, uh, uh, if you will, proof of that. I think a lot of the ideas that I promulgate that I basically, with a lot of the time I spent with Kelly that I promulgate in my book, uh, there are ways to deal with this, to deal with the issues of race. And race is cent cent central to all of this in terms of dealing with the police. I just did an event last night with Connie Rice from uh, the civil rights advocate in Los Angeles, who I've got a great partnership with and was very helpful with me in Los Angeles, trying to get the race issue in Los Angeles under control. For 50 years, the LAPD terrorized the black community in Los Angeles, no denying it politically, as well as uh, 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 using the police. And we were able to turn that around, we turned it around fairly dramatically. Hey, that's an excerpt from our recent live stream with Bill Bratton, who was New York City's top cop. He also worked in L.A. and oversaw dramatic decreases in crime. We talked about what's going on now, what worked in the past, what might work in the future, and how do you square all of that with the need for civil liberties. If you want to watch the whole video, check it out. And if you want to check out our recent live streams, we do them every Thursday at Zach Weismuller and I at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Go to Reason.com and check us out.